Hello, what's happening everybody? Hope you're having a beautiful and amazing day. So very happy to be over show number 2734. We're gonna be checking out some more shield build stuff and maybe some other things too, but I had an idea for a build I wanna try out. So let's head on in and see where the game takes us. Somewhere fun, I'm sure. Where we do get all the fine people here in chat and your wonderful support. The Battalion Radio. Thanks for 87 months, dude. What's up, Dr. Brock? 10 more push-ups. Delaroth, Pojo, Dan, Moroten, Vic, Vic. They're just bought. Don't like change. Tennyson, Tharson, Buttons. Hey, they're lyrical. Rill out. Good to have y'all. Hey, they're Calamity Vane. Yo, before I get started here, Wiki Wiki Man, thanks for 35 months. Ties Forsaken, 76. And Italian Radio, thanks for 87 once again. All right, let's kick this off right now. So my idea was uh, I want to do a discharge shield build like we were doing yesterday, except for this time I want to do it on... Um, the firefly with torrent so we can stack uh, self damage reduction have less of a range with the discharge but a lot more damage output and also i want to try doing the sanctuary with the reflect shield as well because that'd provide the highest base regeneration because it starts at 115 shields compared to uh, the 100 of others so that's the idea suppose split shot could work out all right too um 7.5 a second no let's roll here and get torrent going i think a uh, split shot could work here but torrent is a pretty pretty clear shield so 115 base shield here on that we're using siphon and halo previously which are both base 100 uh, the total regeneration of the shield is based on the maximum shield once you get to Sanctuary. And in addition to that, uh, Reflect Shield has a really powerful effect later game. Okay, here's Firefly, 15% self damage resist, 15% hole crash resistance, and we get thrusters which can also damage uh, very effectively. I think one thing that Firefly is going to excel at is... Um, it can offset the reduction in so it can offset the reduction in thrust that happens from sanctuary because we start at base 140. I'm also pretty convinced I want to get rupture here too. So let's actually work towards that right now. Deflagration was pretty cool when we got it on this build the other day. Even though Hidden Power will drop our weapon, um, it'll be effective for the moment. Okay, Evolutionary Niche, do we care about that? Not as much. It doesn't matter if I go Concentrated Blast or if I go High Explosive here. Non-explosive materials deal 50% damage is blast damage to other targets. I guess in that case we want high explosive. Okay, we got to rupture already. Cool. Uh, kind of a weird start, but we got all the offense we're going to get for the rest of the run, so we're free to take uh, hidden power after we get discharged here. Long way away from that. All right, I'm going to take a masochism here. This is uh, for a later game. We're kind of like building into the end of the build first, which is generally not great, but I got faith it's going to be fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and take shield cooldown. That's definitely part of the build. So the weakest part about Reflect Shield is that it has a very long shield cooldown. And by taking the Sanctuary route, we kind of get around that. In fact, we do get around that. Oh, yeah. Oh, snap. 
Okay, let's let our shield get back online here, please. Go. Hit him with the old thruster here. Oh, dude, I am all mixed up right now. Okay, we're good. This, this ship can get very zippy when you get the boost. Alright, gonna take Kinetic Boost now. This is part of the Sanctuary mod. I'm gonna take uh, Shield Durability. Mm. Yeah, we can get Galvanic Outburst later. Uh, gonna be taking Aegis. Hey, Mopar man, thanks for eight months. Really appreciate that. What's up, Spike? A lot of cool people here today. Um, oh man, Barrier gets Sanctuary in the pool already, but Volatile Shields I need to get Discharge. Just having Discharge right now is <laughs> pretty nice, but I think I need Barrier first. Am I dead? Yes, I'm dead. That's fair. Let's try it again. Actually, thinking split shot might be an uh, an easier way forward on this. Let's see, let's try let's try split shot. Split shot is definitely not the uh, the best weapon, but it's got range. Unlike holy guacamole, that start. Okay, let's try it again. What a start. Better early than late. I believe Splish Shot got a little bit buffed in Amy's 2.0. It's like, it's, it's decent. It's just not, it's no flak or something, right? Okay, here's Reflect Shield. Uh, here's Firefly. Nice of him to give us the upgrades he wanted. Should be a much safer start overall. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Blast Radius again. I'm very sure I want the new Super Mod Deflagration to be part of the build. I've really been digging the Nova Drift lately. Hope you've all been enjoying it too. Such a good game. Man, it's really trying to, uh, to push this on me right now. You know, I'm going to go for a high explosive because as part of Split Shot, it has a cone blast radius. Uh, so now we'll get a much nicer AoE effect off of the blast. You can actually see the, the cones of blast damage uh, going off the enemy, which is good. Um, I am sure I want one hyper metabolism in this build, so I'm going to not spin my reroll. As you can see, the damage is very okay. Very medium style. Right, what's next? Let's go ahead and take shield durability.
Okay, so out of these, I'm taking efficiency. Not seeing the things I really want so far, but I want if I see something that's going to be in the end build, I'm just going to go ahead and take it. That's where I'm at. Oh, I love reflect shield on these guys. Get bopped. Get bopped. Okay, here's barrier. Awesome. We had a cool Scorching Wake build the uh, the last run we did yesterday, but we already have burning damage on the thrusters here. Let's just go ahead and take this. This ship has like a built-in Scorching Wake. It doesn't have quite the range that it does, but the damage is incredible on it. 1,200 damage on the thrusters. All right, what do we got going on here? I mean, I'm definitely going to be taking Shield Effect Radius, but there's other things I'd like instead. Okay, I'm not going to be taking Essence Sap. I learned that uh, last time. You know, I'm kind of okay with Streamline here. Let's go ahead. Uh, Deadly Wake also loses a bit of value on this build because of the built-in thrusters. So let's take Streamline on the other side. It's going to be a very heavy uh, shield build anyways, so the minus hole not as big of a deal if we make our inbuild, which is no guarantee. In fact, Streamline basically offsets the thrust down on Sanctuary completely. And we are officially quite zippy. Rupture or Blink right now? We're quite a ways away from Hidden Power, so Rupture showing back up is pretty likely. Blink's sick here, though. Look how far our Blink reticle goes. Uh, one really cool thing about Blink on this ship is I can Blink uh, past the enemy and then use the thrusters to deal damage. Alright, Orbs of Discord's a big yep on this one. We're eventually going to drop our weapon and be a super up-close build. Alright, let's take Kinetic Boost here. Great Loot Snakes on this one. Fantastic. Solar Heart could be interesting later. Let's go ahead and grab Rupture now. Woo! Uh, this, this ship is quick right now. Holy guacamole. One expedient fellow. Yo, Athros13, happy Saturday to you as well. Thanks for 41 months. Cheers. Definitely going to be taking Candescence, but... Adaptive Armor right now makes a little more sense, I think. Yeah, we've actually done some uh, Siege Weaponry builds rather recently, Tyler. Definitely a fan of Siege Weaponry.
truth is, my thrusters are much better damage than my main weapon right now. Firefly would be one of my top ships for siege weaponry because it has a natural 15% self damage resist. Is very good. Is barrier or reflexive? Okay. Well, I do want reflexive shields at the end of the day. Yeah, Stabilize is also really nice with uh, the Firefly's uh, thrusters, though I'm not convinced I need or want Stabilization at the end of the build, so um, I'm going to hold off on that. We are definitely zippy right now. Almost unsafely so. Once we get Discharge going on, though, with Self Damage Resist, the Thrusters become um, just kind of a bonus. It's not going to be a main source of damage like it is right now. All right, let's take a Galvanic Outburst. That's definitely going to be a thing. I will admit, though, right now this build is a little out of control. Aegis, there it is. We zip zooming. Right, hidden power's already in, huh? Might be time to use a reroll here. Lutz. Okay, here's Sanctuary. Awesome. So we get minus 30% thrust, plus 40% crash knockback resist, 8% maximum shields, 8% shield effect power, and 8% base shields. Uh, also, now our shielding regenerates based on how much shields are missing. Does not mean our shield cannot go down, but the cooldown will not start until it's fully down. So essentially, when we lose our shield, we're in a, a lot of trouble on this build. My goal now is to take Omni Shields, get Regenerative Shields, and we have a pretty good defense after that. Yeah, that ain't it. Oh, well, Deadly Wake is pretty good here, actually. Yeah, let's toss in Deadly Wake. Now we leave a trail of damage behind us on the Hammerheads and some other enemy types that's really effective. I don't think Deadly Wake is required um, since we're using Firefly, but it's not going to hurt anything, and I think there's definitely room for it. No, this will not be a Celestial Lance build. No. Oh, is it time for Gemini? It might be. It might be. Let's take shield cooldown, though. Discharge is the key component to escalating our damage. If we can get that before wave 80, that'd be great.
Okay. Yeah. Probably time to take candescence here. Second Galvanic's not, like, not bad here. I'd like Gemini Protocol after we get some other stuff. Right now it's not as useful. I'm gonna roll here. Okay, volatile shields, awesome. Deadly Wake is super exceptional on these enemies. is going to continue being a tough enemy for us. Oh, let's not hang in there, would you? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take a masochism. That's a good one for a late game, even if I just have one. Hoping that comet was gonna hit him. Guess not. Ow. Oh yeah, reflect. Reflect shield's badass here. Oh no, I don't want to die on this one. Not looking to die though. Oh, clip him, please. Okay, Purge does put deflagration in the pool, but until we have discharge, it's like not as good. Um, I'm gonna do a roll here. Well, core shielding before uh, before that would certainly be nice. The only issue with taking core shielding right now is I'm not going into uh, yeah, I'm definitely not going into dying star on this build. That was the whole point. Corrosion's also pretty decent. All right, let's just take core shielding and then discharge is next. Dying star is going to be in the pool, which we're not going to take, but there's going to be some stuff in the pool we don't want no matter what. Yo, Leo13, thanks for 60 months. Do you appreciate that five years in Tiverloo? Thanks for 91. Thanks a lot. Yo, zero, zero, 001, congrats on that first two mil run. 
I'm glad the stream was helpful. And all the wonderful people here in the community, of course, that share their knowledge. Y'all are awesome. Rad Shibby, thanks for 11 months. One more for one year. Cheers. Nice. I like that wave because it's great XP every time. Well, shield effect radius is going to be something we get into here eventually. Uh, I'm going to roll here because uh, both discharge and omni shield are quite powerful. Oh, I wish I could winnow here, but I'm going to be taking hidden power for sure. Just not yet. If I take hidden power before discharge, we're in trouble. Hmm. All right, well, this right now will increase the damage on our split shot a bit, which I need. Bonk. Yeah, I didn't get discharged before this one, so it's going to be uh, a long fight, and that's all right. I don't mind. Maybe not as long as I thought. Corrosion putting in the work. Can you give me discharge, please? Kind of interested in spontaneous generation here. No, we don't get constructs after um, after that. Okay, reflexive shield. Let's take omni shield here. Okay, omni shield is going to super increase our regeneration rate uh, on the shielding. But now, if our shield goes down, we're pretty dead. Nice. Yeah, corrosion's great. Great mod. Orbs deal their own source of damage. There's no blast attached to them. Kind of like Siphon Shield. They're in their own damage category. Let's read here. Oh, it does. Dealing blast damage on hit. I was wrong. I was wrong. Tooltips are cool. Especially when you read them. Game, you're being a bit of a troll here, is all I'm saying. 
Can't afford the weapon damage down until I have discharge. Here it is. All right, now when we fire our weapon, we uh, discharge lightning out. And we're holding steady Eddie there on the shields. Great. This is a sick way for XP, my man. Again. Oh, stonks. That's the one right there. We stonksin'. <laughs> oh, man. Last time I took this, I kind of regretted it, so I'm going to wait. Uh, okay, plus 40% passive regeneration rate. That actually is our shield regeneration, too. Because once you take Sanctuary, your shields become regenerative. Yeah, Farsight's really good. We took Farsight on a uh, shield build yesterday, and it was nice. I want to do something else. This one. In the right situation, Farsight has to be one of the best mods in the, in the entire game. Ow. Oof. Mercy, dude, or mercy. Um, it is definitely time for Hidden Power here. No, that's not Hidden Power. That's the Dying Star. Okay, let's take Gemini Protocol now. I'm just going to hang out here, let my hull regenerate for a moment. Or my shields, rather. Hell yeah, let's go to Loot Snake Lake right now.
We're only a couple mods away from being very powerful offensively, but we're missing those right now. Just gotta keep it cool. This is a bonus here for us not being as powerful or getting uh, some nice extra stuff. All right, how do I feel about minus 12% size and friction? Uh, Luna, you get more score on Annihilation modes due to the, mo the uh, multiplier for having it active, though this is not Annihilation mode. All right, I don't know about minus friction here, to be honest. Especially if we're getting rid of stabilization. Yeah, okay, we'll take reflexive shields. Uh, so now I get an extra source of damage uh, when I use discharge, because wherever I'm pointing, I get the reflexive shield activation. That's something. Hidden power purification are the two main escalators here. But they gotta show up. Yo, Stormhall22, thanks so much for 83 months. Appreciate that continuation very much. Thank you. Hidden power, please. Okay, I'll take 8% uh, minus size and friction here. That's fine. Four times Galvanic Outburst. Nah, we're going to take Regenerative Shields here. This is going to be a huge increase to our Shield Regeneration ability. That's really the last defensive piece we're getting. Love this wave, man. Let the XP flow. Come on, game. Okay, let's take Purge here. This will get uh, deflagration in the pool. That does thin out the possibility of getting um, hidden power, which I definitely want, but uh, deflagration will also be a massive increase to our overall damage, as we're doing almost exclusively burning damage right now. Get thruster bustard. Yo, hidden power shut up nice. Okay, so we get additional shield regeneration rate, maximum hole, maximum shield, shield effect radius, shield effect power, and thrust. Not to mention 40% global damage. Uh, we lose our split shot, but I've taken only down to rupture to get deflagration, so uh, this is the mint. All right, let's take purification two, which is 40%. Uh, 
burn damage. Oh, okay, our discharge is much slower now. Interesting. That's definitely not a bad thing. It's doing an extreme amount more damage. The build's basically online. There's definitely some very good stuff we can get still, but... We've essentially arrived. I was expecting this to be faster with hidden power and split shot, but I guess since we don't have our weapon, maybe it's a consistent rate. It's interesting. Ooh, deflagration shows up right now. Oh, very nice. Now enemies that are taking burn damage, just all of them, will do a AoE shockwave, that red circle that's appearing. Cool, one second no matter what on uh, discharge with hidden power. Thank you. I thought it would still be tied to weapon, um, weapon attack. That's good to know. That means there's a, a version of this build that does not take hidden power. Deflagration did him a disservice there. All right, hell yeah. Revelation here. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh man, deflagration really messes up the snake style enemies. Big time, dude. You know what? You can hang out inside the singularity. That's cool. That's cool. Bonk. Yo, Death Diesel, thanks for 80 months. A couple minutes ago, 80. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you, man. Alright, let's go ahead and take Shield Effect Radius here. Uh, I like the idea of Focus Shields and Weaponized Shields, for that matter. Weaponized Shields has to be a, a good get. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what... 
wild mod I want to get six of. And Defiance always sounds good, but really doesn't seem very required here, right? Maybe six times Galvanic Outburst might be a thing. Six times Masochism could be all right, but then we'd be at 21% extra damage taken from enemies. We'd get a very significant global damage increase, though. Not against it. Yeah, I'm trying not to take Dying Star on this one, though I do agree six masochisms would take us to the point where it would make a lot of sense to take it. Dangerous wave right here. What is our self damage resist right now? At 19% shield damage resist, 45% self damage resist. That's good. Okay, let's go over here then. That's fine. Once that caustic rollover begins, yikes. All right, let's take focus shields here. Uh, this is less shield effect radius, but plus 5% maximum shields bring us to 279 shielding right now, 279. There's also a hard cap, I believe, of 70% uh, damage resistance, self-damage resistance, to add in, in that conversation in the chat. Does not mean that you couldn't stack with shield damage resistance with Gemini Protocol or something. But yeah, you're never going to reach 100% self-damage resist. That's not a, not a possibility. That's a good one. Enjoyed that. Stabilization's fine, but let's reroll here. Okay, what about six times solar heart? Uh, that'd be 2% burn damage per solar heart per wild mod that we own that takes us to six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve <laughs> okay and then we'd also be taking 0.4 damage per wild mod we own so 12 times 0.4 
Yeah, it's way too much damage. I could probably take three or four solar hearts here, but not six. I think in a lot of ways, this is a better version of Dying Star for a build like this, though. Let's go ahead and take Adrenal Module. It averages damage proportions of both hull and shield, so it's going to be a flat damage increase. I think of even more than 20%. Probably just let him uh, let him hit me here, or reflect the bullet back. We got plenty of regeneration to do so. Um, whole strength okay, plating's okay. I'm gonna do another reroll here. All right, six times evolutionary niche is actually quite interesting because we're getting 1.5% self damage resist and 1.5% whole crash damage resistance per evolutionary niche. I think probably both defiance and masochism probably a little bit better though. Let's hold off one more level before we fish for our wild mod. I'm gonna take weaponized shields. Wave two hundy. This guy's gotta go. He's down now, good. Black Shield's pretty freaking powerful. Later, Tater.
Okay. Like, hull strength's very okay, but... Does allow Gemini Protocol to defuse a little more damage. The kind of issue is when I'm using Discharge that we're not regenerating hull fast enough for it to matter. here. Yoinks. I think I might just take stabilization. Let's go ahead. It's not going to hurt anything. Later, Tater. Tough enemy set. There we go. Honestly, agility is pretty sick. Let's do a roll, though. One more. What does energized shields do for us? Shield cooldown is very negligible. The minus fire rate would increase the size and damage of discharge. Let's take emergency systems, I guess. Zipping and zooping now.
So I'm imagining a version of this build. That does not take hidden power. Uh, I'm debating what weapon I'd want to use for that. I think it's probably Pulse. Yeah. What is the damage resist right now? 30% on shields, 52% self. I guess we're at the point where I'm just going to take Dying Star anyways, though. It's kind of my intention not to on this one. I don't know about that. I don't feel like the build needs Dying Star. Right, I'm going to roll and whatever I get, I get here. Ooh, I bet conversion might be interesting. Let's go agility, though. We are the mobility king. Cheesy rice, dude. Cheesy rice. Later, Tater. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, buddy, that's tough for ya. Alright, it's either six times Scorching Wake or six times Masochism here. I think I'm actually gonna take the six times Scorching Wake. Uh, if I was gonna go Dying Star on this build, I'd take the Masochism, because then we'd be at maximum uh, self-damage resist, and it'd give us a lot more global damage. But uh, since we're not taking Dying Star, we're going Scorching Wake here. We know this is good. I think it's a lot more thematic for this build, which is going much more defensive than offensive. Oh, snap. We're good.
Also has a good synergy with um, stabilization in some cases. Oof. Okay. Let's let our shields come back here, please. Let this guy live for a minute, just so I can regenerate. Good. So you usually take Omni Shield Mecha Nero with uh, like the build like this, which it has regenerative shields for Sanctuary. Uh, you can also take Omni Shield on some specific builds that use a lot of Energized Shield, which reduces the shield cooldown a bunch. And then you have a very large shield that regenerates or has a shield cooldown that's very quick, and that's very good. So I think rather than trying to look at one thing being better than the other, look at it as being situational on what you're trying to build. Because they accomplish very different things while providing what appears to be a similar effect, having one bar being larger than the other. Shield broke. Okay, we get it back here. Oh, that's lucky. I got it back. That's lucky. Lucky wave, my dude. Shield cooldown right now, six seconds. Not bad, dude. Not bad. All right, can I afford one solar heart here? I think one solar heart's okay. Got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, one solar heart here could work. be a 24% increase in our burn damage for that yeah, seems almost better though we also reduce that uh, self damage by quite a bit as we're over 50% self damage reduction right now so it'd really only be about two or so uh, self damage versus the 11 of dying star I'm gonna try Solar Heart here. All right, this keeps our regeneration at a rate that's fine. And it also really increases the damage a lot. I think we could even maybe afford one more Solar Heart, but that'd be pushing it. That'd be putting us in like the Dying Star territory.
Yikes, that's a lot of mines. Hey, Prime Stuff, thanks for eight awesome months. Appreciate that continuation. And Master Toaster, thanks for 29, man. Cheers. Scorching Wake looking real good on that one. GG. GG. Tough combo indeed. This guy with this guy is a, a rough one. Alright, it was a very fun build. Um... I don't think I would have done too much differently there. I just wanted to try to get away with doing the shields without a uh, dying star. Uh, and that definitely did work. Yeah, Reflect Shield uh, gave us the best regeneration possible, but I agree that Siphon or Halo would probably be a lot better damage-wise. I mean, I guess if you're going to go into especially the Solar Heart one, Halo Shield was uh, the best damager. So maybe even sacrificing a little bit more defense to take Halo and then maybe Radiant Shields uh, could be an interesting effect for sure. All right, before we go any further here, just going to stand up, stretch my legs real quick, use the restroom, grab some water, and grab a very quick snack, my breakfast, in fact. We'll be back in just a few short moments for another run of Nova Drift. Thanks for your patience during this very brief intermission. As always, no ads during any of our breaks. Just do one set at the very end of the show. We'll be back soon.
Alrighty, we have returned thanks for your patience during that brief intermission. Let's head back into another run here. I'll just say something briefly here. Appreciate all of the discussion of the mechanics uh, in the game. I just uh, will also say I think it's good to keep an open mind about other people's ideas, even if you think they are incorrect in some way. Uh, there's really no reward for being right in a game with this many mechanics. Even if somebody's wrong, perhaps there's some, some form of merit in their idea. Hope that comes off well. After all, trying things out in this build, or in this game, is uh, really all the fun, if you ask me. Sometimes when we have an extreme amount of knowledge about something, and I'm certainly guilty of this too, can feel like we're very correct about things, but that's kind of a, a mindset that is not great for learning. So if you want to share your ideas, even if they're wrong, that's fine. Um, just... If you're correcting everything everybody else is saying, that comes off as being a know-it-all, which I'm sure is not the intention. Hope that makes sense. All right, let's see where we're going next. So no Dying Star on the shield build I think is good. I think what I want to try next is going into, uh, going into Halo. That was certainly an opening wave indeed. I also think I want to try going without taking, well, how do I feel about no hidden power? Decent. I bet Thermal Lance Discharge is really good. I'm torn in between, like, three ideas I want to try right now. What about discharging, uh, Salvo? Okay, let's try this real quick. Let's do a combo build. I'm gonna go for... Let's just do Ampere. I'd say blade builds are have been similar for me in uh, shield builds in that... They can be difficult to get started, but very powerful once they get going. Okay, here we go. Does Corsair get two sources of discharge? Is that is that a thing that happens? It has two cannons. Me curious. Let's actually just go into discharge quickly so we know. I think the funnest uh, blade build I've tried yet was uh, orbital shielded blades with Gemini Protocol, and then the uh, the size of the orb on the Shielded Blade gets really huge. The fun one. I 
think all of our work on shield build is going to help me pull off this Courser build a little bit better. I enjoy the Courser ship a lot. It's a little funky, awkward to, um, to maneuver. I'm gonna go flash shielding because I am gonna to go Tempest Break on this, I believe. Plus, I'm very curious about the nature of discharge on this ship. Does it appear? Do we get two lightnings per fire? Because that'd be cool. Just tried to blink, which I don't have right now. Fair. I'm gonna roll here. All right. Well, certainly fire rate's gonna happen. I mean, that's a fact. Tough way for the old courser here. So courser doesn't really get going online until it has a uh, warp strike. Once we have warp strike, then we get to access both sides of the salvo. Right now, we're getting one side, which is still good, but it's not. It's not better than most ships. Okay, you know what? Uh, one twin strike. Sign me up. Sign me up. That's one extra projectile per stockpile rate. Okay, here's discharge. Science time. Gotta have my shield up to science here, though. Hopefully we live. Um, am I seeing two sources of lightning here? It looks to me like there's one central source of lightning. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely one lightning arc per fire. Okay, fair enough. Stonks. Not a bad source of damage. Interesting, anyways. Take magnitude here. Looking for a deadly wake instead of streamline here, though I'd be open to both. Uh, Okay, can we not? Thanks, game.
I don't think it's going to be our quickest boss kill here, and that's fine. Give it a loop. Evolutionary niche, not as good on this feller. That's fair, that's fair. I'll just take a payload. Oh, bonk. Not bad, not bad. So I'm thinking if I can get to uh, Death Blossom with Tempest Break here, that this Discharge style uh, volley could be really great. Never done Discharge on Salvo, so I'm interested right now. It's going to be a very tough wave for this ship right now. Alright, I'll take charge shot then. Should save me a little bit, or not. Yo, Spell Siger, thanks for 85 months, dude. Appreciate you. Alright, let's go ahead and go again. I think if I'm going to add Discharge into a build like that, it's got to be much later, is the bottom line. Alright, I'm going to do Thermal Lance here. I'm going to do Halo. I'm sure do like the look of Thermal Lance Halo. I think I'm going to try a shield build that is not relying on hidden power, so we keep our weapon. Which is certainly a dangerous prospect. Let's go ahead and go Viper here. I think Viper has a direct synergy with... with that. And we don't have to get into Discharge early on this. We can definitely do it later. Uh, let's begin by taking Rapid Fire. Both Rate of Fire and Blast Radius increase the size of the Lance. And Viper has a natural plus 20% Ignite Duration. Safe to say, it's going to be a spicy buoy. Okay, we're going to go Loaded Mines here, too. Loaded Mines uh, Thermal Lance is just like a real cool look that I enjoy a lot. There it is. Can I have this XP, please? Thank you. Whoa there, buddy. Spicy boy. Stonks. Oh, I think masochism is pretty good here. I think I want defiance, though. I think that's what I want. Not going to be going discharge for quite a while here. This means I'm not going to drop my shield like I normally would here. Hmm. Choices. 
I say kinetic boost because uh, I think that Aegis is kind of a must for this Thermal Lance build if we're going to do it this way because we can gain uh, damage resistance while we're floating towards the enemy with this. Okay, burn damage is burn damage here. We're, we're all burn, all damage right now. Give him the old windshield wiper. Get out of here, bugs. Oh yeah, deflagration will be uh, like the ultimate here. That sounds good. Oh, it's kind of like a an endless well casualty challenge. I try to explain what I'm doing, but uh, there's often things I misunderstand or uh, don't fully fully realize. There's just a lot of mechanics in this game. As I said earlier, always good to keep an open mind to the possibilities. Okay, 20% increase in rate of fire is a 20% increase in maximum lance size, so... Yeah, sign me up. Get your core melted. Alright, Bravado being a 15% increase in unique powers, what would this do? Yeah. Caustic Barrier would be uh, extra hole damage resistance here. The extra damage on the Caustic as well. But I think most importantly, it'd be 3% Ignite Duration. I'm going to not take Bravado here because it, it greatly complicates the, uh, the waves. And right now we're just having an experiment. I do think Bravado would be very good here, though. It making enemies all elite and champions is, uh, well, it's complicated. Okay, I'm going to take Stabilization here, because Power Reserves allows us to be a lot more mobile with the Lance Extended. Shield durability. All right, here's barrier. Nice. was a really sick loot snake. I enjoyed that. I think what I'm going to do now is actually save up to try to get Ataraxia because our mines are going to be killing stuff at the edge of the screen a lot. So our extra ability to pull those orbs in is going to be relevant. Something be really fun for this style of build too could be a spontaneous generation with vital bond on the mine side to get uh, the drone sharing our passive regeneration. Wow, get less than one cycled, my dude. Okay, let's take elegant construction. Oh yeah, I was saving right now. Yeah, Ataraxia also gives bonus thrust global damage and some other stats for every unspent upgrade. So some of the highest scoring builds possible in Nova Drift, to my understanding, are Ataraxia builds, where you build something that's very simple, and then you boost the, the damage and all your other stats by not spending upgrades. 
I'm not too interested in that kind of build myself, but uh, they're a very powerful uh, resource. I just like it mostly for the, uh, the ability to collect orbs from a further radius. I essentially think that getting Ataraxia at any point in your run for most builds will pay for itself, regardless of the other bonuses. Sprite card, those are our loaded mines, so they're creating a variation of our weapon. They can receive more prongs based on mine effect and a few other things, projectile count. So this will probably be three prongs uh, for this run. Let's let our shield come back online here. I got six upgrades stockpiled. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take a Retribution right now, because this is going to unlock the Vital Bond, and then if we get Spontaneous Generation later, that'll be cool. This emergency systems or that. You know, Corrosion's good here, but not required yet. Let's go ahead and improve Thrusters. All right, Sanctuary's here. I do want... Oh, Power Reserves I want, too. Let's actually go power reserves now, and I'll go into discharge much later. Look at my man, he's cruising right now. Okay, grants resistance to mobility reducing effects from your weaponry. That's just part of the lance. We get minus 30% thrust and 50% rotation speed while charging. So that removes it to uh, 50% or 25% rotation speed and 15% thrust reduction. There's a very large increase into our mobility to turn and hit things with the lance. I did grab Purge, huh? Oh, let's just grab Pulse Strength here. Alright, I think I'm going to go into Blast Radius, though Purification's ultra strong. I don't think damage is currently a problem. Uh, where we're hoping Master Toaster is to get spontaneous generations, then we're creating Swarmers with our kills, and the Swarmers take a natural damage over time effect, which Vital Bond will negate. Also, if we end up going uh, Burnout Reactors, we can keep the mines alive for longer. Mines have a maximum lifespan of 10 seconds, but if we can get closer to that 10 seconds, um, there, that's good. So a couple of possible synerg synergies for Vital Bond, but nothing solid yet. Okay, Blast Radius. You know, agility sounds kind of keen here. I think I might take it just to have full full control over the lance. Feeling pretty good about movement at the moment. Might even do a reroll here. Uh 
Oh, wow, he didn't die. Good for him. Good for him. Get your core melted. want the other side of this. I'm going to go ahead and take Sanctuary, because I'm curious how this might, this might actually tank the build, but maybe not. Tank the build after Discharge, that is. Time will tell. That is a lot of missiles, my dude. I'll give you that one. Wow, he just evaporated there. That's tough. That's tough. Okay, let's go Deadly Wake. Ataraxia finally showed up. Thank you, game. Yeah, Ataraxia likes to hide sometimes. I am going to take agility here. Now we are the windshield wiper. You know what? I'm going to take four times Masochism here because that is a 32% increase to self-damage resistance, which is going to be relevant. All right, Mind Specialist, let's go. Let's go. Okay, we got an extra prong on the mind because of that. Nice. We're also producing mines at a much faster rate, which is great. He's purry. I mean, yes, I will take these. For an up close and personal build, having the orbs of discords pretty good. Pretty good.
Okay, what I'd like to get in the pool now is the deflagration super mod. So we need to get to rupture, which we're one away from. Which I guess rupture's in the pool right now. Man, rainbow lances look so freaking cool. Okay, shield cooldown. I mean, I could very easily take, like, magnitude or something here, but I don't feel like the offense is a problem at all. We should be able to go almost all defense right now and be... Feeling okay. And also, I started this run considering how Discharge would work with Thermal Lance, so I want to see that come to fruition. Why don't you want to step towards the center of the map? I don't get it. Explain yourself. You know, I should take Magnitude when I see it, because getting to charge mines is a pretty uh, massive bonus. Hell, just getting to charge shot here is good. Wave 100. Alright, here's Rupture. Let's take Rupture, because now Deflagration's in the pool. There's a lot of stuff on that upgrade I wanted, but, you know, can't have it all all the time. Get out of here, you stinky enemies. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take adaptive armor here. Adaptive armor is going to be real important because uh, when we end up taking discharge, we're doing self damage, and armors can proc off of self damage. So it gives us an increased. Uh, rate of damage protection. It's essentially bonus self-damage resistance. You can see that sprite guard. Man, I need to get uh, into playing that Dead Cells DLC at some point. My problem currently is I have too many games I'm enjoying. What a terrible problem to have. Or a wonderful problem, depending on how you look at it. Been really digging the Nova Drift lately, though. It's a great game. All right, here's Volatile Shields. One more to get discharged, which was kind of the purpose of this build. No kidding, by a lot of loot snakes this run. I mean, okay. I'm gonna take Magnitude here. What's the opposite side of Payload? Splinter. We're definitely not taking Splinter.
Uh, there's Discharge. Let's check it out. Blink was probably the better tank there. Okay. This is acceptable. Oh, this looks really cool. I like it. Sanctuary is also reaching a, a nice point for regeneration. We're not having a lot of shield at any time, but... I mean, the damage is good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here, buddy. Excuse me? Excuse me? I'm debating what I want to do. Let's start by going corrosion, though. I know corrosion is not going to be bad. I think a hyper metabolism uh, is uh, going to be a good thing for this build. Deflagration too. I'm unsure how much the damage is actually increased for having taken discharge, but I'm sure enjoying the the visual effect. Regenerative shields probably stabilizes this a smidge as well. Or just the regeneration perk in general. Okay, I want blink, but deflagration here. So we have an insane amount of burning damage. So the the aura on this should be pretty wild. Segmented enemies have no chance now. Interesting ironic. I didn't know that would affect allies. Makes sense. Was that a uh, propulsive munitions that provided that effect for you? Out of curiosity. Ooh. Ride the way. That's a reroll. Oh, purification's really good. Uh, channeling's also really good. Let's try to get to core shielding here. So propulsive munition changes the firing angle of allies. That's really interesting. I'm guessing that's for uh, the interceptors. Cool effect. Alright, need my shield back. Thanks.
Uh, Killer Squid, the main mode right now is this arcade-based score mode. It is an Asteroids-inspired game, so... Uh, while there will be some other modes added in, such as Boss Rush, Draft Mode, and eventually some story aspects, uh, I think this will continue being the main mode, which is Play Till You Die. don't have blink yet i would need to get that going blink is a very big survivability up for any build especially this one Seventy already, dang. That's cool. I believe propulsive munitions does not affect allies. I think it reads on the tooltip it only affects your weapon, but it's still really good on any build that's doing like salvo or something. I may be may be mistaken on that. I'd say propulsive munitions. Yeah, no, it can actually work on a like this build, propulsive munitions, if the weapon knockback wasn't as bad. Maybe with defiance is an idea. Let's go blink here, finally. Uh, you can do either, Jago W. There's an option in the menu to auto deploy mines, and then there's also a toggle where you can turn that off and manually deploy mines. I was actually added in the latest update, which I'm appreciative of, which means I've been trying a lot more mines builds. Where am I? Okay. Lost track of my ship there, no big deal. Oh god. Dead. Keep feeling like I should die here, and then I don't. Okay, it does include your firing. I think there's even a tooltip at the bottom of propulsive munitions that says something about only affecting your weaponry. If we see it, I'm going to look at that because it could be interesting for a build like this. Man, these waves are pretty brutal. Excuse me? Just a little feller here coming through. Little feller here. Yoinks. I got bunked. Uh, payload, charge shot, charge mines is a way forward here. Let's take a hype metabolism, though. Uh, this will increase the global damage we're getting from... The masochisms, and will also greatly increase the regenerative ability of our sanctuary shields, which seems smart. Ride the way.
shield cooldown, please. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'm definitely not convinced at this point that uh, the discharge is an improvement for this build, but I will say I'm enjoying the visual effect a lot. Sometimes something looking cool is good enough. Okay, here we found it. We don't have the uh, vital bond yet, but let's still grab spontaneous generation here. Uh, now we got a chance to get little fellers when we kill kill enemies. And the really cool part about this particular effect is that swarmers, at by their nature, apply vulnerability to targets, so that increases all sources of damage. That's uh, all of our burning damage, our ignite damage, our... This is everything. Take my shield back, please. Thanks. Thanks. This is a very visually spicy build. <laughs> I've lost track of my ship probably a half dozen times so far. Not a complaint, merely an observation, dude. All right, my goal here is just to let Redfeller get through his cycle, and then uh, once he's through his cycle, he'll create a black hole, which will pull the bulwark in. And that'll be good for us. Go. Okay, now we can focus on this guy. Well, yeah, little fellers can also absorb projectiles, even really big ones. So it is, it is in a way, defense. GG. That was a fun experiment. I think I'd prefer that build uh, without the discharge. I'm kind of digging the idea of the, the sanctuary uh, on that build. Sanctuary is pretty neat. Uh, Viper Body gives 20% Ignite Duration, and both the Lance and Sparks ignite for damage, uh, Sergeant Stins. Also has a natural whole damage resistance, so that's uh, a way to go about it. Yo, Skyliner80, thanks so much for 55 months. Appreciate that continuation. Thank you. Just gonna do a whatever build now. We'll just see what the game gives us and we'll give it a go. Or we'll die on the first wave because it's a nasty one. Mm 
Okay, I'm going to try a pulse build that is actually very offensive rather than the uh, defensive pulses I've been doing. I'm going to go ahead and go for orbital shield here. We're definitely going to be up close and personal, so I think that makes some sense. Alright, let's go Corsair. Let me get two iterations of the Pulse. That's a lot of damage. Okay, Pulse scales off of Blast Damage. Electromagnetic Blast centered on you. So projectiles not as great here, but Blast Radius and Damage are. Let's go payload. You know what? Absolutely, I want these. Charge shot is interesting, right? I don't think I'm going to do it here, but I like the idea. Let's go whole strength. Let's see Discharge working here, too. Let's just go ahead and take Adaptive Armor. We know it's going to be good. Open wide. try to not use mines here so I can build a more uh, consistent build. We're using here orbital. Shield effect power is not bad. Weaponized shields is very interesting since we're so up close. I probably want to get towards that. Also thinking this sanctuary again uh, is probably very decent for this kind of build. Uh, for orbital shield especially because the shields will be able to gain uh, a larger maximum radius. Yeah.
That was fun. Ooh, what does Death Blossom do here? Okay, now I'm curious. It says, rapidly fire your weapon projectiles. So projectiles come off of this weapon. I'm not convinced that would actually do a, a pulse. Okay, it fires the sharp projectiles, not the pulses. Thank you, Lancer. That's kind of how I read it there. Makes sense. Okay, blast radius is a big old yep. Wave number 40. All right, high explosive, you betcha. You betcha. Now we're pulsing. I like I like Deadly Wake here, um, if only because it's very good on the hammerhead enemies. Which I think is a problem for this build. Uh, things that chase us, we don't do a very good job of damaging. But with this, we can hit him with the old fire trail. Rupture is probably very worthy here. Go ahead and take um, absorption, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's certainly a thing. Let's get some force armor going here. Thirty-five percent damage seems pretty keen. Siege weaponry here too could be really nice. I'm going to go ahead and work towards Sanctuary again. Let's keep this shield theme going. This will be a very up-close and personal build, no question about it. Yeah. 
tough enemy here. Really? Okay. Just trying to get him with the fire trail. This guy's resistant to blast damage, too. This is going to be the problem enemy. Fair enough. This will help. Yeah, incendiary strikes also interesting. Um, let's grab. Let's grab a reroll here. You know, I'm gonna grab regenerative shields. I think a three times galvanic outburst might be where we're going. All right, going to forego discharge. Yeah, this is good. Excuse me. Whoa, I got flung. Yep, defense strong shielded constructs would be very cool addition. I think that'd be a fun way to build orbital. Thanks for that idea. Here's Barrier. All right, now this would be a build where Celestial Lance would make some sense. Charge shot maybe later. Let's take channeling right now. Let's see. Super mods. Tough situation right here. I think burst fire is the next escalation on this. If we live, that is. 
You can do it, little buddy. I believe in you. Alright, let's try and get our um, shield back here. up again. The next wave is going to be spawning here soon. Be careful. Secondary source of damage such as mines would probably be awesome here. That enemy is 100% the nemesis of this build. I'm gonna do a roll here. I have 14 of them. Alright, let's take Sanctuary here. Gives a little less thrust, but now we have regenerating shields. It's kind of been the theme of today's runs. Alright, here's Celestial Lance. So moving at high speed is create a, burn a searing aura that burns both you and nearby targets. There's self damage associated with this too, but. Basically, we can give them the old uh, the swipe by here. Cool visual effect as well. Wave number 80. If I'm not mistaken, this guy is also resistant to blast damage. That's tough. Maybe not. Oh no, we're definitely uh, getting through the layers here with this blast damage. Hell yeah. That went a lot better than I imagined it was going to. All right, then. Not sure on that one, Klimbo. A little inexperienced with Celestial Lance. Uh, I would imagine that as long as you're continuing to hold down thrust, the blink will continue the same rate of aura. Just basing that off of other experiences of using blink at high speeds. It's like you pick up where you left off after the blink. Okay, let's roll here. These are both good. Weaponized shields is a nice damage upgrade here, but... Keep rolling. Yeah, what I want is the burst fire side of this. Let's go ahead and take Omni Shield here. I already got Sanctuary, so I don't really see the downside. Also allows the orbs from the orbital to become extremely big, and the orbs do 
absorb projectiles after a certain point. Yeah, there we go, Clembo. I think that confirmed it there. Um, if I blink while we're going at high speed, the damage continues, or the aura stays the same size. So blink is literally just a teleportation, does not affect the current rate of thrust or application of Celestial Lance, is my feel. Okay, let's go ahead and take a three times Galvanic Outburst. It's another source of damage here. Thanks for that question. Do appreciate it. Always room to learn more in games, especially this one. I think Pulse is in a pretty sweet spot to be a happy medium between offense and defense. Uh, it doesn't require that many upgrades to be good, but it does like some weapon upgrades. You got things like Dart and Salvo, it's like you want almost every weapon upgrade in the game, where this can get away with a little bit less. Yeah, frankly, if we're going to do this, this charge kind of makes sense. It's probably a weird version of this build where we go Tempest, Break, and Sanctuary. Never thought about that before. Because then you still regenerate shields, but if your shields went down, then they'd be uninterrupted in their ability to uh, come back online. But not this build, because we took Omni Shield, so when the shield goes down, we're pretty much dead. Let's roll here. I got 12 rerolls. Okay, I'm going to take one hyper metabolism. Uh, that re removes 15% of our total hull and shield uh, permanently because it's an extra regeneration rate. And Sanctuary goes off a regeneration rate. This will also amplify any future global damage ups we have for missing health and shields, such as kinetic boost or masochism. This guy again, what's up? I have a strong feeling it's going to be this guy plus some other enemy that's going to do us in eventually. Strong feeling. Man, those orbitals are racing. The enemy projectiles are pretty freaking sweet here. Very interesting effect. Start going towards weaponized shields. Woo! That's some Orbos right there. That's some Orbos. Wave 100. Let's talk about it, though. Real up close in person. Is seriously just tank the railgun right now? It's amazing.
<laughs> okay, I like those orbs right there. They're pretty cool. Me like. Oh, I think any run that reaches over a million scores is pretty sweet. Servash, which is usually around wave 200. Though, uh, any run where you learn something in this game, I would call a success. Alright, we're going to take Gemini Protocol here. That was a very nice comment, thank you. Well, oh, that is a yoinks wave right there. Yoinks! Alright, rupture is probably very worthy here. Let's go ahead and take Rupture. There's no deflagration happening on this build, but... This build could take, um... Could take Discharge. It's not going to. I'm gonna build it a different way. In fact, let me just say, I think this build would be much better off for Discharge, but I want to see how it operates without it. So no hidden power, no Discharge. Sanctuary. Big surprise for me on this run has been the effectiveness of the uh, the orbital shield in the sanctuary build, uh, giving us the ability to kind of uh, take care of the projectiles enemies like this are making. See, so it straight up degenerates or erases the uh, enemy projectiles when the orbs reach a certain size. Just how orbitals should be. I don't see any reason that uh, Holebreaker couldn't take a shield-based build, though I think part of the Holebreaker bolt type is a minus shielding capacity. Doesn't mean it couldn't work. It's definitely an idea. Man, I really wanted to get the uh, the pulse shot here, but it hasn't happened yet. Adrenal module sounds cool. Since we're essentially on zero hole most of the time, that's going to be a large increase in global damage. Don't let me take a look at the tooltip here. Damage dealt to you or your shield increases the charge of the orb. So yes, self-damage could increase orb size. Seems seems right. Yep, there they go. They are increasing in size as we get Celestial Lance. That's cool. Good idea. 
that's very interesting. Our health is being kept low because of the Gemini Protocol mod, which splits damage between our hull and shields, but will never allow us to go below one hull. So we're essentially kept at very low hull, and any regeneration we receive is immediately diffused into damage that's being taken by the shields. It's mainly taken to improve the effectiveness of Adrenal Module and other global damage increases on being damaged. Okay, can I get burst fire, please? One time? Uno, uno mas? There it is. Oh, bravado shows up too, that's fine. We're gonna take burst fire now. We're gonna fire slower, but uh, a lot more damage when we do fire. Since we're not activating the attack all of the time, it's just gonna be better off overall, I think. So I got this build where I wanted to, and we're only level 35 right now, so 15 more levels or so for a good run. That's a lot of wiggle room on a way to build this. Yeah, our low health's not as scary as it may seem, because we can't go below one health with Gemini Protocol. What will happen, though, is the, the moment our shield drops, we're probably dead. fun. I think sc just one Scorching Wake here sounds good. We're certainly uh, doing the thing where we get up close, so... Seems good. Seems good. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Do enjoy. Alright, well, Mind Specialist, I guess that sorts that out. Uh, excuse me for just one second here, just a quick restroom break.
All right, we're back. Uh, Kite P1, most runs that are good will make it to about level 50 or thereabouts. 53, 54 is about as high as I've gotten. Uh, as levels definitely be get slower the further the game's gone on and the uh, difficulty gets more <laughs> aggressive, so... Uh, most runs will end up around around that. Though you get to level 30, 35, 40 pretty quickly. And then it slows way down from there. There are uh, a few things you can use to get around that too. The... Um, Do Hecarin's mod gives you plus five levels. You can also take multiple Grand Jurors, which increase levels too, but there's downsides to those. So most runs about level 50. All right, there's mines. I'm in. Thinking charge mines just sounds pretty good. Honestly, charge shot just here would probably be a really massive increase in damage. We'll think about it. Big bada boom. Another one. No, we are playing on mayhem mode. We are currently on wave 158, which is why Seraph is this quick. Uh oh, I'm getting bonked. Got him. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take charge shot here. I don't have to use it, but, uh... Ow. Oh, that looks really cool. Me like. Am I dead? Because shield's down. Hold on, we're not dead, though. We're not dead. Now we're dead.
Uh, it's not always work anymore. Firestorm they have are randomized within certain parameters. So after you've seen a boss, you can see it again. That's the old update you're thinking of. All right, that was a fun experiment. So I think that build with discharge would be uh, a lot better damage overall. Or just with loaded mines even would be more sustainable. Still have quite a few pulse builds I'm looking to try out. Let's go back to Thermal Lance though here. I'm going to build a somewhat defensive uh, Thermal Lance build with Architect. Well, it's really going to depend on, on you, I guess, Killer Squid, but it's a very easy game to play. There's a lot of mechanics to master. I got a little 300 hours and I learn stuff all the time when I'm playing. So um, confusing in the sense that there's lots of mechanics, yes, but in the form of picking builds and trying them out, it's really not bad at all. Let's go for the Amperage here. Let's go Architect. Okay, blast radius, yeah. Yes. It also has a, an unlock system, so you'll have less complicated decisions when you first start playing. But if it looks like something you think you'll enjoy, uh, you'll enjoy it. Let's just put it that way. Okay, let's go mines here. So Architect gets a massive bonus to mines at the base ship. 50% uh, mine effect. And 50% uh, construct assembly speed. So mine effect is how big the blast radius is. And when we load the mines is how many iterations of the weapon we get. So I believe that Architect with no other mine bonuses starts at a four-pronged four prong thermal lance, which is real strong. A uh, volley affects the sparks that are coming off of the um, the weapon, Marty Khan. Sparks apply vulnerability per hit, though lance builds usually don't go into projectiles for that reason. And this is also the reason that you get the lance on the loaded mines, because it's not technically uh, the projectile of the weapon. The lance is the side effect, though the more powerful part of the weapon itself. Yo, Snaggle2, thanks so much for 36 months, man. Appreciate that three years. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll take Rupture then. Honestly, a little bit counterintuitive with the the way Lance works that way, but um, the Lance size is affected by blast radius and rate of fire, and then the rate of fire affects how fast the sparks come off. And you can see the spark counts only one, right? But it's firing 7.5 a second. So adding more projectiles in does add a lot more uh, vulnerability procs. Something to think about. Vulnerability definitely stacks on top of each other. No question. I don't believe there's going to be a hard cap on vulnerability, no. Let's go ahead and take spontaneous generation here. So I think vulnerability stacks, uh, as far as I understand, work similar to corrosion, where they have a set duration. 
So you have a soft cap of how much you can apply just based on how fast you're applying uh, the stacks themselves. Okay, here's loaded mines. We got mine specialists too, so we have five prongs. Oh man. Wait, hold on. Why is the mine being auto applied here? Oh, right, because we're architects. So, in order for this to work for me, I gotta get to charge mines? Still isn't bad. Maybe I should leave it like this. Okay, let's. Definitely going to work towards charge mines here, but... All good. Ooh. Okay, Loaded Mines does have... The number of weapons produced by Loaded Mines is determined by your rate of fire and projectile count. So this could be interesting. Let's try a Twin Strike here. I don't know if it's actually good, but we're going to find out. Okay, that's a lot more sparks coming out of the, the Lance. So something I could do is I could manually apply the mines so that it would uh, stay out doing the lance. But I think I'm just going to leave it like this. It's not going to be quite as effective for damage, but still very good. It also looks real cool with the lance reapplying me like. Alright, so I'm going to take Retribution here, so Vital Bond shows up. Oh, right, I gotta drop my shield for Vital Bond. Okay, I'm willing to do that. Once we get to charge mines, the auto-applying of the mine will not happen right away. It'll leave it out as charged, so we can work around that a little better. This build got weird fast. I like it. Okay, power reserves. Nice. I'm going to take agility here, too. Scary. This wave, though. Okay, let's take regeneration. Yeah, rotation speed of mines is very randomized, but there is a rotation speed uh, statistic, which probably affects the mines in some way. I don't know that for a fact, but it seems like it would make sense there. Here we go, rapid reconstruction. So we just dropped our shield uh, to gain more regeneration. This is relevant because now Vital Bond's going to show up and the little fellers we create will be able to out-regenerate their damage. So now our allies get 60% of our 7.14 regeneration a second. So the only way that the little fellers now die is if they get hit by enemies, which will definitely happen but we'll be able to sustain uh, somewhat of a, a mass of them in a lot of cases. OK, 
Okay, burst fire is an extreme increase to the size of mines, or the lance size. Not just for me, but for them as well. Bonk. Am I dead? I am not dead. How wonderful. Okay, hold on here. Uh, swarm contracts take 0.75 whole damage a second. So if we times that by four, be about three whole damage a second. We're getting 60% of a regeneration, which is around six. So the swarm constructs would still be staying alive with this. Hell yeah. Little fellers the build. Builds funky, and I'm liking it. All right, let's take magnitude, because getting down to charge shot, charge mines will give us a, a, essentially a completely screen-covering mine that will stay alive uh, for about 10 seconds. Goals. Also, if I see some HP up, I should take it, because that'll help the regeneration factor, uh, not just for me, but for little fellers here. Ow. Ow. Oh my god. It's not. What's well, not? Alright, definitely taking payload over splinter here. Big time. Look at all these little dudes crushing stuff right now. Dang. So the little fellows each apply a stack of vulnerabilities similar to our sparks. So now we have two sources of vulnerability being applied and a whole bunch of stacks of burn damage. So that, uh, that works very well together. Interesting, Lancerd. So you're saying that the construct damage is not stacked for multiple instances? I'd believe that, though I have not seen it in effect. This could work with ally, yes, Alhan, but it's a lot more, um, a lot more investment into constructs. I actually haven't messed around with ally architect too much. I'm sure it's very good. Maybe we'll give that a go after this. Maybe not. I don't know. Just kind of going with the flow today. It's a good. Uh, it's a good idea. Some issue I ran into is uh, the engineer ally thermal lands. Is that the lands wasn't quite big enough on the ally because it's a reduced version of your weapon. But if you look at the size of the lands we're getting here, it could definitely work. No doubt. Yo, real deal. Thanks for 53, dude. 53. Legend. Alright, here's charge shot. I want it. Looking for that charge mine. Charge shot's just great on us as well, but charge mine's even better.
All right, candescent seems very appropriate. Pretty much all burn damage right now. Oh yeah, I could see Wingman Torrent being awesome. It's a good idea. Oh, there's a lot of things I should get here, but I'm looking for loaded mines right now. Okay, let's take Absorption, though. That's less damage from, like, every source when we take whole damage. Seems, seems good. There's supercharged mines. Okay. So now when we place down a mine... Okay, it's still auto-applying. Interesting. Interesting. Let me change this real quick. Let's go auto-deploy mines off and define keyboard and mouse controls. We have it on D right now. That works for me. Raise the sun, if only I could be so grossly incandescent. Honestly, Ranker seems great here. Because I'm not charging my weapons, so it's basically free plating at the cost of a little bit of thrust. Like, look at the center effect on that. It looks so freaking cool. So cool, though. Oh, I'm dead. Okay, fair enough. I just couldn't see, that's all. That's not true in this case, Ted Orcs. We still had two mine construct limits. Because we had Mind Specialist. Fun build, though very bright. Alright, let's do, uh, let's round this out with a build that I know is real good. What color projectiles do I want is the question I'm asking now. I think I'd like orange projectiles. Also like to not be dead here. That'd be good. Alright, let's do it again. Mine specialist first pick on architect. You got it. All right, this one I do want auto deploy mines. Debating right now if I'm going to be dropping my shield or not. Yes. Yes, I am.
Frankly, just these mines right now are enough to defeat most waves. They are big bada and also big boom. Okay. Let's go ahead and just take rapid reconstruction here. I'd love to get into loaded mines, but uh, getting all of the shield mods out of the pool this early, certainly to our benefit. Full strength. fly in here. I like the idea of getting all my XP right now. Thanks. Open wide. Alright, let's take velocity here. This build is going warp strike, I'm sure. Our first warp strike build up today and yesterday. No warp strike builds yesterday either. Get out of here, black holes. Jeez. Why don't you collide with each other or something? Get it out of the way. Space man. Your snipe, I'm in. Mines, love it. Okay, after getting loaded mine, I'm now going to save up four upgrades to get Ataraxia. This build absolutely needs Ataraxia. Some builds, I would say it's uh, arguable, but uh, this one, with stuff dying very consistently on the side of the screen, we want it. Yeah, so the black holes uh, absorb enemies and then they eat the XP. So flying into it removes a large percentage of your hole in shields, but then lets you get that XP because uh, it does not consume it for you. I am much more likely to fly into the black hole uh, early game rather than later because later <laughs> when you pop out, if anything hits you, you're probably dead. These loaded mines are so effective on the inside of this enemy. Jeez. Leave some for the rest of us loaded mines. Or don't. That's fine too. Oh, lost track of my cursor there. Fair enough. Fair enough. We alive. Okay, let's just save our upgrades here. No, there's no mechanic for singularities uh, merging in Nova Drift. It's a cool idea, though. 
As always, if you ever have any ideas or uh, suggestions for this game, the Nova Drift Discord is a great place to leave those. The dev is very active there, very open to feedback. A uh, great group of people discussing all sorts of stuff over there. A wealth of resource. And also the most constructive place to leave feedback if you do have any. Okay, I'm going to grab Blast Radius. After Blast Radius is concentrated Blast to 35% damage increase. Wow, it showed up right away. Is it my birth miss right now? Okay, I'm going to 20% fire rate. Let's go. Okay, you need this. Bonk. Okay, here we go. Concentrated Blast. Actually, do I just take Deadly Wake right now? I don't see myself going Streamline at the end of this. Yeah, let's go Deadly Wake. Then we can get Blink, and now Warp Strike's in the pool. Okay, Elegant Construction is much faster mind creation, which scales with our level. Do plan on leveling. Oh no. Good. Just a little bonkin'. On a later wave, that would have absolutely taken us out. This enemy is actually the main complication of going Warp Strike loaded mines, because then a lot of your mines end up on the front of the enemy. It's tough. Um... I kind of like the idea of a hypermetabolism for regeneration rate, though Essence Sap is arguably even better. I'm gonna go for Kinetic Boost. Global damage modifiers are pretty OP. Yeah, a little heavy caliber never hurt anybody on a salvo build. So something that I was incorrectly saying on stream for a while was that knockback had multiple iterations with salvo. Uh, if you took like burst fire plus heavy caliber, which isn't true, you only get one iteration of knockback um, on salvo. So heavy caliber is a pretty safe take. Increases weapon damage, reduces weapon velocity, which in a way increases homing. Also reduces fire rate, but for this particular build, that's not a problem at all. Alright, magnitude's good. Okay, also, based on the experience I just had with Thermal Lance, I think I can take Charge Mines on this build safely. Absorption's fine. Anytime you want to go ahead and give me uh, 
warp strike though. I'll be thankful, game. All right, so to clarify what I read in chat, because I still don't fully understand the mechanic on when Architect auto-deploys mines and when it doesn't. It will auto-deploy mines if we have a mine construct limit of more than one, regardless of whether we have charge mines or not. Loving the idea of getting to Little Fellers as well on this one. Will that happen, though? I'm going to take Skirmish here. I'm sure Essence Sap is the way to go. Since we have such a high hole amount right now, 192 with a little more um, to raise up, and we're auto-deploying homing missiles, which will soon be screen wrapping, uh, we're able to keep Essence Sap at its maximum regeneration, which is 10% of our hole per second, which is much better than any other form of regeneration we can get. Take one more heavy caliber here. There's Warp Strike, all right. Okay, so what I'm getting at is I created a situation at some point on some run where the charge mines were not auto-deploying, but I can't remember the circumstances behind that. Because if it's gonna just auto-deploy right now, I don't mind taking charge mines at all. Though, I could maybe even be better off keeping the charge for my own weapon. That could very well be the case. More science required. Could have been minefield that caused that effect. Could have been. Okay, I definitely want burnout reactors. I'm just gonna go ahead and snap up self-destruction now that I can see it. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder the effectiveness of a deflagration uh, on this build. I think that could actually work out very well. Would make us take corrosion, which would be a 10% weapon damage down, but it seems like not that bad of an effect for adding the corrosion per missile. I kind of just want to take charge mine just to see what happens. Um, let's go ahead and take another heavy caliber here, sure. Kind of reaching a velocity amount on these missiles that maybe I don't need to take targeting, which is real good.
Only level 29. Lots of room for this build to grow. Um, honestly, as far as windows go, not bad here. Though losing Rupture and... Yeah, losing Rupture is a little tough. I'm almost going to take Rupture here. We're doing a great job on holding on rerolls anyways. I don't think the extra 7 we get from Winnow is a huge benefit. Dude, let me get caught up here. Sorry for being behind. Kakashi1090, thanks for that tier 3 24 month subscription. All good on my end, except for I was late to your notification there. Hope you're having a good one, Kakashi, and wasted mine. Thanks for 66 months and a tier 2 sub. As always, if I relate to our mission notification, do sincerely apologize. That is my own personal nightmare, but it does happen as I have a rampant case of humanitis and no alerts playing in my ears as part of our no-frills format. Just thanks for your patience. Okay, here we go. I ended up taking charge mines here just to see if I was misinformed. The more I think about it, the more I think I was. Or the more I think I am, rather. If we get Splinter on this build, our damage is just ludicrous. Okay, uh, revelation for sure. Okay, well, here is charge shot. You know what? Okay, I'm in. Three more heavy calibers, sign me up. The knockback is big, but our missiles are even bigger. Sign me up.
Okay, let's take a look. Charge mines here and check it out. Okay, they are auto deploying. I guess I was just mistaken, and this is great because those missiles coming out of there are slamming. Gigantor, even. I can now save up my volley for whatever I want. The worst waves. I mean, we're here. Okay, so I was just straight up misinformed here. This is uh, still auto deploying. What situation did I create where the charge mines were not auto exploding? What was that? I'm 100% sure it happened. It maybe is even just like a little glitch. That's definitely a possibility. Okay, it's mine plus charge on not engineer, which sets mine limit to one. All right. So if the mine limit is one, that's when the problem occurs. Makes sense. I'm going to re-roll here. <laughs> I mean, we're here, right? Amazing to think we do not have Splinter right now. What a world. What a world. Not sure I want Ranker right now. I'm gonna roll again. Yeah. Splinter, there it is. Now our gigantic missiles are gonna create new missiles that will home in on enemies. I would say Splinter's probably about a 200% damage increase here. That might be a bit extreme, but it's a lot. It's a lot. No targeting on these right now, by the way. We just we just slowed down the um, slowed down the velocity so much that the base targeting is doing all the work. Pretty dreamy, dude. Terminate, yep. Yeah. Pretty dreamy. <laughs> Oops, all dead. Oops.
Honestly, Little Feller's the build right now could be really good if I get to Retribution as well. Let's try for this. Because everything's dying the second it enters the screen, so very few enemies are going to have a chance to kill off the Swarm Constructs. Seems fun. Wow. Antimatter rounds I can live without. Let's go ahead and take this Retribution, which gets the uh, vital bond in the pool. Then we have permanent little fellers. Well, near permanent little fellers. The velocity on these missiles is in a real sweet spot right now. There it is. Alright, so now our Swarm Constructs are able to capitalize on our regeneration as well. That is a good thing. Oh yeah, burnout reactor is still in the pool. We can get even faster missiles here. Or mines, rather. I don't believe there is a limit to swarm constructs, but there could be a hard cap of some sort. If I had to guess, it'd probably be something like 256. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take Juggernaut here. The plus 20% maximum hull and crash knockback resistance seems really relevant. Do I even have Essence Sap yet? Wow, I don't. Okay. Overseer would be okay here, but without more advanced construct limit, it doesn't provide that much benefit. My understanding is that Overseer, unless you're going to go Mortar, wouldn't be um, as good. I don't think this is a Mortar build. Could probably work. 
the, my main concern taking Overseer right now is the uh, percentage down thrust that we would get. And we're already very, very slow. Okay. That was a really big explosion on that guy. Wowzy. Okay, here's Essence Sap. Alright, so Essence Sap increased our regeneration a lot because we store up to 10% of our hull. Uh, so about 22 regeneration per second and anytime there's an enemy on the screen. So yes, a build similar to this could go Overseer, but for the way I built it, I think it would be a mistake. Okay, I'm going to release my 440 missile salvo here. Goodbye. Hey there, Ferret Bomb. Good to see you. Yo, Smody. Thanks for 87 months. Appreciate you, dude. 13 months from that 100 club. Believe in you. I mean, is more little fellers wrong? And if it is, do I want to be right? I don't think I want to be right if more little fellers is wrong. I wasted my volley, and it was worth it. Evolutionary niche is real good. This is 5% mine effect and 5% construct assembly speed. Uh, yeah, Dr. Manhattan, the amount of missiles per mine is scaled by rate of fire and projectile count. I do have 15 rerolls here, though. Like, I could start looking for candescence to get burnout reactor, which would be a 30% increase in mine production rate. Not a not an increase in mine effect though. Let's do this. 
I have a feeling I'm going to get to about level 50 on this one, or maybe a little higher. Let's go fishing. Oh yeah, that's a good point. We probably don't want burnout reactors with the swarm constructs. Thanks for that. Wasn't even on my radar, but that would be one way they could die. Good catch. What wave are we on? 283. If I can save my volley for wave 300, that'd be really nice. boost. Awesome. Scary wave right there. Wave 300. I mean, Warpath is even more missiles out of the mines. Probably should take that. Yeah, let's go ahead and take this. I mean, lots of enemies respawning, so it's going to be total increase to fire rate, which increases the amount of mines stored or missiles stored per mine. Yeah, there's no hard cap on missile stockpile, but it does uh, decrease in stockpile rate the higher the stockpile gets. So, like, once you get past about 100 missiles stockpiled, the rate starts slowing down. But we're still able to stockpile missiles. To as far as I know, there's no limits to the maximum amount. It just gets very slow after a while. So diminishing returns, not a hard cap, is my understanding. Oops, all dead. Oops. Two mil. Two milli. It's happening. I think I'm moving too much for Aegis to be effective. Let's take a look at burnout reactors here. Constructs take eight whole damage a second. Can't do that. No way. Calibrate's alright too. I think I'm just looking for wild mods though, really, with my rerolls. I could also go for minefield. 
But I think with the minus mine effect and the fact that the mines don't get to charge as quickly, that's a pretty tough sell. This could be more total stat. 5% weapon damage plus one plating. All right, ranker, let's go. The minus thrust is tough, but uh, this run's going to eventually die to lack of mobility anyways, so let's just keep the damage scaling and also increase our ability to take lots of little hits. Would really prefer not to die right now, partner. That is 100% the enemy that's going to kill me. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So I, I don't know if this will be our high score or not, but I can say this is the best iteration of the salvo builds I've built as far as damage goes. And the reason for that is, is the two realizations I've had in between this build and my previous uh, high, high score build. And that is that I can do charge mines without losing the effect. <laughs> there it is. And I can also do um, heavy caliber without multiple instances of the knockback. Big bada boom. Okay, so I also think there's a, a good argument here for keeping the shield, because then we could take barrier, which would make it so the maximum amount of damage our shields could take from one source would be 25. So uh, in instances like the massive uh, repulse wave the bulwark does, or an enemy like that, we'd be able to mitigate the large damage to 25. So our shield could take three or four hits instead. All right, cool. We made the leaderboard there. Very nice. Hey, Big Bear, thanks for 44, man. Appreciate that a lot. I'm also extremely curious on doing that build with Spectre. Because Spectre Loaded Mind Salvo can achieve a similar uh, capacity, but also have the ability to stay cloaked. Which is pretty huge. Maybe Spectre with an actual shield like Reflect or, uh, yeah, probably Reflect. Because we had Reflect at 115 base, and then we took Shield Durability, we took Barrier. That would allow us to take around five hits in total before the shield broke. Yeah, Fire Shield Spectre, uh, early game at least, would be really nice, but I think late game our main goal would be staying away from enemies altogether. Though the idea of having a burning shield and cloak is pretty sweet, because then you could, you know, uh, melt the enemies when they can't see you, which sounds fun.
All right, we're going to do one more run. We're going to do something similar with Spectre uh, ship there. And if we're very lucky, we'll find Mind Specialist again. Okay, here's Reflect. Let's try to work on this barrier idea, because I think very late game, the ability to reduce a single source of damage to 25 is massive, because enemies scale in damage as the game goes on. Also, Spectre Salvo has a supernatural synergy that it can gain up to 250% weapon damage for every missile in the volley just by cloaking. And you can see the enemies are losing sight of us rather quickly. In addition to that, uh, Spectre, as it levels up, starts cloaking faster and faster. Okay. This is actually like a super sick winnow. Yeah, dude. Let's go. Yep, Calibrate also really nice here. I agree, I agree. Uh, let's take Thrusters. Yeah, I can wait to get into Barrier. Let's just, let's just wait on that. Uh, is Regenerative Shields, do I want to go for Sanctuary, or is it literally just Barrier we're working out? Sanctuary doesn't seem bad. Haven't done it yet today, uh, Ferret Bomb, don't know if we will or not. Resets currently at 4 p.m. Pacific, though. Well, 4.15, really. Okay, here's mines. Yep, I've done a few Railgun Spectre runs in the past couple weeks. It's definitely a very fun synergy. I'm with you on that one, it's cool. One real cool thing about Spectre is that taking damage does not break the cloak really. Which is pretty awesome. Whoa, back to back loot snakes? Sign me up. Alright, let's just take the heavy caliber we can see right now. Um Okay. Now, on this ship, Streamline does make some sense, because the higher your... The higher your thrust is, the more you can maneuver around without breaking cloak. If you just tap thrust, it doesn't do it. Like, firing or moving quickly. Moving quickly denotes holding down thrust. So if you have a high thrust, you can tap it. But just getting the blink right now should probably be my priority. There's Blink, awesome. Can also Blink without breaking Cloak, that's sick.
tell you one thing for certain, this build needs Ataraxia. Actually, getting in position to uh, pick up all the XP, one of the main complications of this build. It's making me lean more towards the uh, streamlined side of this. Discord orbs on the cloak feller seems tempting, but I think is a bit of a misnomer here. Let's just save it for Ataraxia. It's going well. Amazing amount of loot snakes and reroll drops here. Amazing. So when you build into Railgun Spectre, uh, since it's your PB run, what what was the key component to get it up and running? Because I was struggling a little bit on waves that had uh, a lot of stuff on them with that. What's the ticket? Enlighten me if you're able. It's going to take Candescence here. It's going to save my rerolls. Going for Ataraxia without spinning rerolls. I think late game on any build, but especially this one, we'll be fishing for some very specific stuff like Heavy Calibers. Okay, that's cool, Since I could see adding more projectiles. I've been hesitant to add more projectiles on Railgun builds, but I could definitely see the effectiveness of that. Thanks for the idea. Okay, here we go. Getting to loaded mines here would go a long way.
All right, this gets to burnout reactors. Feels weird having that in the pool before I get loaded mines, but okay. Let's just take the flat increase right now. Hell yeah, there we go. Want to take heavy caliber, but loaded mines. There will be more heavy calibers in our future, I believe. Okay, Velocity is part of Warp Strike. Snipe's part of Warp Strike. In fact, Warp Strike is currently in the pool. The spaghetti is cooked. I repeat, the spaghetti is cooked. Rex Rose 194. Thanks so much for 38 months. Appreciate you very much. I think I'm just going to skip charge shot and go for a uh, minefield here. But right now I don't need to do that. Let's grab calibrate. Um. Oh, okay, okay. That's right. On this one, it doesn't blow up like architect. Never mind. Mines last a total of 10 seconds on this build, and that's just how it be until we get burnout reactors. Or, you know, mine specialist. I want to take warp strike real bad, but it's very likely we never see this again if I don't take it now. Very, very likely. Okay, what is the overall hull on mines with mine specialist? We start at 25 hull. No extra health on Mine Specialist. Interesting. Okay, maximum hull, 25% here. Yeah, okay, so they're like a little over 30 hull. So getting burnout reactors would make it so they explode in four seconds. And in that case, taking charge mines makes a lot of sense. Okay, blast radius is a must for this build. Because behind blast radius is concentrated blast, which is 35% mine damage. Not an insignificant increase. All right, Splinter's cool. Splinter will be even cooler once we get Warp Strike. That's a wave. All right, um, let's go ahead and take the Heavy Caliber. 35% blast damage can wait. Okay, on this guy, I actually want to give up my cloak so that I can get him to fire these projectiles in a consistent way. Not like that. Right, the caliber is getting heavy. Warp Strike wants to show up, I'd be grateful. Or back up, rather.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and snag shield durability right now, because I know I want to get barrier, and if I continue putting that off, I'll forget about it altogether. Yes, we definitely could uh, fish for warp strike here with our rerolls. There's no doubt. Just don't feel. I don't feel like we're at a at a problem area right now. Okay, reflexive shields, no regeneration. You know, honestly, probably not. Let's grab warpath here. The drops have been pretty kind as far as the uh, perks go. Haven't had too many situations like, oh, I don't really want any of this. Okay, I'm going to take Weapon Mastery because that's one more super mod that won't appear that's not Warp Strike. Also, it's just a great damage increase. Where'd he go, George? Where'd he go? Twin strike? Alright, I'll take one twin strike here. It's ultra rare, so I likely won't see another one. But one more missile per stockpile rate and multiple more missiles per mine. That's a winner. Well, 35% blast damage. We're just grabbing a heavy caliber here. Let's grab another heavy caliber. Let's go. Okay, now I'm going to fish for warp strike because I want it. Okay. I mean, this is all good and well, but let's roll here. No, I do not want to lose 20 rerolls for five levels. Nice try game. Stonks.
Uh, you you guessed it, that Stonks is going to be a four times heavy caliber, and then we're done taking heavy calibers here. Hey, glad you could make it, Sacrosanct. It'll be more than likely a stream tomorrow as well. I think I'm taking probably Tuesday off next week. We'll see how it goes. A little bit dependent on weather, to be honest. The gardening has begun. All right, how about we take Barrier here? That's the one I was talking about. So my idea with Barrier here is, on the extremely high damage enemies, such as the Bulwarks, we can get around that huge Blast Wave by having a maximum damage to our shields be 25 per hit. Where, in reality, that Blast Wave is getting up to, like, 200 plus damage in the very late game. And I think for this particular build is the, uh, the, the biggest danger. This guy, too. The railgun gets really gnarly. All right, without warp strike uh, on wave 100, it's going to take a while. That's all right. I'm pretty confident in my ability to kill this enemy. Doesn't have to be quick. This has to get done. Just like most things in life. Yep, hiking's awesome. Can't wait to get back hiking this year, too. I've been on a few-year hiatus due to all of the uh, isolation stuff. Pretty soon here. Be through it. Got him. Hey, work strike showed up. All right, give me just a second. You're just using the restroom real fast, and we'll continue this run, which is going to go a lot smoother now that we have work strike and our mine uh, missiles can loop back around the screen.
Alrighty. So now our missiles can wrap the screen, and that is real nice for us. <laughs> Later, taters. Yeah, what a nice set of waves to get eaten by the singularity there. I enjoyed that. Yo, stonks. I'm thinking uh, minefield could be good here. I really want to get to burnout reactors, so let's go ahead and do this right now. Self-destruction opens up burnout reactors. It's going to be 30% faster mine assembly speed. We'll also make them kind of self-explode and make them more of a, a cadence than a sitting there till something gets near them. Which seems good. I'll just wait. You guys have a nice day. Should have just been patient there. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Let's take kinetic boost here. No, I got 21 rerolls. Let's fish. I don't even know for what right now. Something. Charge shot, charge mines, burnout reactor. Uh, let's take a 35% increase in blast damage. That sounds cool. Missiles are officially blast damage. That is um, quite awesome. Take a revelation here. Big bada boom.
Here we go. 30% assembly speed for non-shield constructs. That's our mines. So these are going to take rapid burning damage, but we're regenerating them fast enough that we're now going to have a continuous stream of missile, or missiles from the mines. Previously, the mines are getting deployed and the enemies had to get close enough to them or they had to last for 10 seconds to explode. Now you can see it's more of a, a pop every few seconds. So that's nice. It's going to let me utilize my cloak a lot better. Way we on right now, 137. All right. Yo, Captain Trips, thank you so much for nine months. Appreciate all the support today, everybody. Thank you all for all the things you do to make this content possible and sustainable here in our 11th year here on Twitch. Should just take a lot of people doing a lot of different things. I'll tell you that much. Appreciate you. Like, three times double tap doesn't seem bad here because it would be an escalation to my stockpile rate and the stockpile rate for the mines. But... I think 50% mine assembly speed here is uh, actually quite relevant. Yeah, this is a that was an escalation damage for sure. It's much more consistent damage out anyways. It's not near as many missiles, but it doesn't matter if we're producing them 50% faster. Also, if I'm remembering correctly, the uh, the bulwark will not fire off the shield blast if it does not have a visual on us either. So that's another way we can avoid that that attack. Like here, he's charged up but unable to fire because of our our cloaking rate. Do I have Rupture right now? Um, no, I don't. In order to make Deflagration work here, which I think could work, we'd have to get Rupture, uh, Purge, and Corrosion. So that's three perks. Uh, what am I going to get if I don't go for that? Rupture would be real good. Purge would be... Eh. All right. And Corrosion would technically be a weapon damage down, though I think with the amount of missiles we're producing, maybe not. I think something just like Gemini Protocol here, or maybe Essence Sap is a, is a cleaner way forward. I got 18 rerolls and nothing looks great here.
I don't think deflagration has that much of a benefit. Alright, I'm gonna grab efficiency here, regeneration and shield cooldown when we're not firing, which is pretty much always. Shield cooldown is a very relevant stat right now. That was a big old miss right there. That wasn't. Okay, that confirms it for me. He needs a visual in order to fire the shield blast. So Spectre is very good at navigating uh, around that. That volley was mint. Good evening, Dukowski. Good to see you. What's happening? Alright, Skirmish. I uh, definitely think Gemini Protocol. Gemini Pro- Whoa, 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 whoa. Essence Sap is the way. I put myself in a really bad position there with those bulwarks. Just a little whoopsie doozle, that's all. Oh, nice, Kowski. Hope you have a, a restful rest of your night off. Glad you could make it. With this many wild mods, the orbs of Discord are very inoffensive, but getting to charged mines right now would be a huge increase in our passive damage. Our mines aren't lasting too long, but they'd be long enough to charge up some. No hard cap Sakura saying, but it does have diminishing returns as the uh, amount gets higher and higher. Diminishing returns to stockpile rate, not stockpile amount.
Charge mines, here we go. Oh yeah, our mines are getting a good amount of charge there. Beauty even. I would say that's probably a 100% increase to our passive damage if you include the splinters that are created. S splinters are generated based on the size of the projectile, and charge shot increases um, the size of the projectile. So in addition to the bonus damage you're getting for charging the mines, you get more bonus damage for the splinters as well. Don't mind me, just hanging out here in the corner. That would have been a good wave to use my volley on. Where are we at right now? 209? Okay, we're doing pretty good on XP. I'd say we've missed some XP just due to the way I'm moving very slowly around the screen, but not too much, in fact. I don't have payload right now? What? 30% weapon damage, 12% projectile size. The minus fire rate does hurt a little bit, but this has to be an effective increase in damage. Absolutely, it's increase in damage. Probably lose like two missiles per mine, but then we gain that back in splinters, and every projectile has 30% more damage. There's no way that's not an increase. Oh my god, look at the size of the missiles coming out of those mines. Hot dog. Debating going Vital Bond right now. Uh, I don't have much regeneration, but it would allow the mines to reach a higher charge level. Probably not worth taking two more mods for, though. I can just look at some straight-up defense right now. What level is this build right now? 43? Okay, there's not that much meat left on the bone here. Probably want to fill in this triple um, pick, which is probably going to be heavy caliber again. Okay, terminate essence sap would be really significant. Uh, getting whole strength also sounds nice. Did I take Gemini Protocol? I didn't. Okay, let's get to Essence Sam, Gemini Protocol. And frankly, Terminate right now is uh, probably about a 20% damage up. Yes, enemies die at a 12% health or less with Terminate when they get hit with a weapon, but enemy health scales as the game goes on, so that 12% is an increasingly larger 12%.
I would not disagree with that, Bowsenduros. Terminate's very effective. It's not perfect in every situation, but uh, we're only having to grab Skirmish before it. It's got one of the highest power levels for sure. For sure. Very few builds don't. are hurting for taking Terminate, that's for certain. Wow. Only got a couple levels left here. Let's just fish a little bit, huh? Oh, I took stonks on heavy caliber. I did, didn't I? So I'm not going to see heavy caliber again. That's fair. Got to figure out what else we want here. Let's just take Gemini Protocol. I do think I'll get to level 50 here, so we got some time. Love how they spawned in there and they had no idea which way to go, so they just started putting out mines. Seems legit. You can get higher than level 50, though. Most builds will stop around 50, uh, just due to the way XP scales. I guess a better way for me to say that is, I think this build will get at least five more levels. That was a fun noise. I enjoyed that. Antimatter rounds are fine here, but they only affect my projectiles. Not the mine's projectiles. Well, I didn't need to fire there, but, you know, I did. A big hit right there. I'm scared of right there. That kind of stuff happening. Enjoy that rainbow, bud. Enjoy it. Oh, how did they see me go? Excusey? Excusey? Defiance for plating is not bad. What other wild mod would I take here? I think like Twin Strike is probably what I'd go for. Uh, but if I don't take that, what is what's another one that I'd take? Burst fire just to get fire rate. Hey Kazanri, thanks for 95 months. 95. Appreciate that continuation. Five more for that Hundo Club. Yeah, I think Burst Fire is it here, actually. And Rupture is decent, though. Let's keep going. Uh, okay, Essence Sap. I'm going to take that. That's good. I don't think Incendiary Strike is worth the point on this build. Incendiary Strike would add a pretty constant burning damage on enemies, but it can only be applied once, so we only get one stack. I think there's a one-off antimatter rounds that add more damage than Incendiary Strike right now. 
I've really only been taking incendiary strike on slow firing weapons like burst and railgun. Though I'm sure there's some other synergies that I'm unaware of and there isn't a build where incendiary strike's going to be a wasted pick. It's always going to add some damage. But the effect does not stack on itself, which is its downside. Oh, let's not blink into his uh, railgun there, thanks. Oh, that volley hurt, man. Big miss right there. Listen here, you son of a gun. Stop it. Stop circling my missiles. My only weakness. There are quite a few options for the controls in the settings killer squid, but uh, if you've never played an asteroid style game, it's just something you're going to have to get used to. Whoa, dude, this wave is nuts. Holy guacamole. Get him off me. Get him off me. What? That noise? Am I dead? Oh, dude, am I dead? I am not dead. Dude, that was amazing. Really lucky to be alive. Really lucky. I kind of want to just take Rupture here, but let's roll. What's the base damage on weapons right now? 60? Yeah, that's a pretty large increase in damage. Something I just realized in antimatter rounds is it says base damage, and base damage then scales off of your other weapon upgrades. So it's an even bigger damage increase than I initially thought. It was pretty cool. Yes, with Salvo specifically, you only get one instance of the self-damage for anti-miter rounds, so it's essentially a free pick. It is not the case in some other weapon types. Very similar to how we're only getting one iteration of knockback.
guy's got to go, dude. Oh no, that railgun's doing a lot of damage, man. Okay. That was scary. Very tough wave, especially for this build. I always say this, Salvo is the weapon that allows you to focus on dodging the most. But it does have some inherent complications. I got eight re-rolls, and we still have the triple wild mod left. Corrosion seems interesting, because it's minus 10% weapon damage, but then we can take, uh, or be getting damage over time. Okay, that's a nope. I'm just gonna take this. It gives me plus one level, and there's no banish happening here, so it's, uh, just one more thing removed from the pool. No... Taking targeting probably isn't wrong at this point. Rupture is also very strong, especially against those bulwark enemies. I'm going to keep rolling here for the triple wild mod chance. That's the one I wanted right here. Double tap. Let's go. So that increase in fire rate is going to mean probably three or four more missiles per mine. Uh, I think Polar Inversion is Blast Radius only, not Blast Damage. I'll take a look if it shows up again. I don't, I don't think I'm mistaken on that one. Yeah, once I get to uh, only this guy on screen, not so bad. That was a waste, and a beautiful waste it was. Just gorgeous, that waste.
Oof. Yoinks. Yo, 2.2 mil right now is pretty sick. Pretty sick. I feel as if the maximum amount of damage my shields can take being 25 has saved this run several times already. So I think my idea with barrier was uh, good. Hard to imagine Rupture being the wrong choice. Yo, Shining7, thanks for 92 months. Eight more for that hundo club. Oh, here's pull on version. Let's look here. Yeah, 15% blast radius reverses knockback and pull directions for you and your constructs. Definitely some great uses for this mod, but uh, Blast Radius, not very important stat for me right now. One place that is really cool is on uh, a build that you want them pulled into the mines. Like maybe Thermal Lance, they get pulled towards the center of the, the mines because your uh, Lance is then doing a pull. Could be a good use for it. Sure, there are many others. Ow. Just a little feller, not very tanky over here, alright? Alright, so I'm just gonna stay cloaked in the corner here, because if I get uncloaked right now, they are just gonna blast me with that shield. Huge. This guy is trolling right now. What are you doing down there, buddy? Hey, talking to you down there. Hey, show yourself. What do you mean I'm not showing myself so you're not gonna? Don't be rude now. There you go, bud. Appreciate you. Well, the next thing I use my volley on is going to be in um, a bit of a hurt. Got a 520 missile volley right now. It's a few.
That wave scares me. Not anymore. It's dead now. That was a very fun volley. Let's save up another big one here. If I have a massive volley available for wave 400, that would be ideal, because wave 400 is just... It's gonna be brutal, we already know. Find the gap, there it is. Okay, that was scary. That was real scary, in fact. Alright, we know the drill here. Wait, we on 356. I see celestials or a few select waves. I'm gonna unleash my volley, but this is clearing most things by itself. Yeah, this ain't one of them. This is a should be a slam dunk wave, and they're quick right now. Jeez, slow down, fellers. I mean, targeting seems like it'd be pretty good here. I got five rerolls. I could fish for the plus five level thing, too. But, yeah, let's roll here. Full strength does improve the ability for Essence Sap to work. Little fellers. I'll keep rolling. I can't take Purge to get uh, the other one in the pool, too. No, I'm just going to take Targeting here at one reroll. I think that's effective. I came out of Cloak when I came out of that level. I didn't know that was how that worked. Now I do. Now I do. going to be picking my moments to upgrade uh, more carefully now. Oh man, my missile volley is going to blot out the sun when I fire it. Oh man. Nah, you have a nice day. You go right on in there. You have a good one.
Am I dead? I'm dead. <laughs> that was a tough wave, but very fun. Maybe like number four? Number... Number four. There it is. What I should have done there was waited to fire my volley until the blue fella was turned around and the uh, singularity was off the screen. However, very fun run. I'm glad we tried that one. Um, would I done anything much different there? Not really. I think the main difference I could have done on that build would be build into corrosion so the missiles were applying a burn damage effect and then trying to get the deflagration super mod. Yeah, it was the lance that got me there for certain. For certain. I got hit by one railgun too. Probably a version of that build that doesn't take minefield as well. Arguably could have gone away without calibrate, though it was nice. An Omni Shield Sanctuary version of that build could be interesting too defensively with barrier. Other than that, I'd build it just about the same. I always try to look for something I might have done differently. Not necessarily better, but other possibilities. Anywho, like that build. All right, got one more stop on today's stream. We're going to do the Spelunky 2 daily first look. I'm uh, going to get the game loaded up here, title swapped, and then we'll head on in. Also going to do a prediction here if you'd like to guess on the success or failure of this run. All right, prediction getting started. Will this run make it to 725 is the prediction. I'm put 15 minutes on this prediction. I'm just going to take about a fiver myself. It's going to stand up stretch real fast. Before we do, though, we'll get into the uh, mind shaft. All right, Jay. All right, penguin in hand. Again, I'm just going to stand up, stretch real quick, use the restroom, grab some water, and then we'll head into the Spelunky 2 daily. Good luck, everybody that's going to wager here. Um, catch you in just a minute for the daily run.
All right, we have returned. Uh, several minutes left. Get your prediction in if you want to. About 10 minutes, in fact. Uh, we're going to kick off the critter-related festivities and get this run started. Time to put this penguin into the hole. Here we go. There it goes. Where'd the dung beetle go? There it is. Dung beetle going up the shaft, but how high? Aiming towards the chair. Nice toss, Jay. All right, last one. Cricket going into or up the ladder here. 180, turn around, chair, sit down. Here we go. Okay, got the chair. Missed the cricket. Let's try again. This cricket has been wildly lately, man. Yeah, old chief. Thanks for 23 months. One more for two years, partner. Thank you. Daily run begins right now. Spelunky 2 daily. First look. And we're off. Um... tough whip right there you know for the rest of the daily goers let's find us in this crate that crate has three ropes in it so if three ropes is worth one bomb to you do what I did hmm okay uh, let's do it this way Listen here, you frickin' mole. Listen here, bud. Got him. You know, I'm gonna take a torch with me to the next level, because I can. And we're off. All right, fair enough. Hmm. All right, pace in a present down there. That's great. That's great. No, sh no shrine. Definitely going to check out Turkey Town for the daily goers. And also there is a ghost urn we can grab with turkeys here. Oh, snap, okay. I'm gonna put this down here real quick. Two minutes already. One crate which has three ropes inside of it. Okay, well, debatable if it's worth it or not. Right, let's check this out. It's in the box. Teleporter, all right, all right. Let's get our big spender bonus here. 
Going to curse your store, sir, and then buy your good. You have a nice day now. Watch out for that ghost. Watch out. Easier to get the key from up here. Well, I guess with paste, it's uh, negligible. What kind of store we got here? Oh, gambling store and a Kali shrine. All right. I got some plans for you, Poochie. Glasses are cool. So I'm going to try to gamble to the best of my ability here, but we're pretty broke right now. Is the truth of it. Okay, there's two moles right here. Uh, I can't get them live onto the shrine, so probably not. Okay, we're just going to win all sixes, right? All sixes, Jay. Okay, well, or that. Okay, we're broke. Why would you do that, Jay? Hubris? Okay. Alright, well, time for some high-stakes gambling. I break the urn inside there. Oh my god, he's still alive. Um, should come from the right hand side, right? Yeah, okay. Third item is 12 bombs. Get him out. Get him out. Well, I wish I could have afforded that, but I think almost nobody will be able to unless you save your money and don't buy the present. So maybe don't be me and don't buy the present. That's good info for the other daily players. 12 bombs at the end of that station. Skeleton key. Cool, dude. Good info. I'd much rather have um, 12 bombs and a teleporter, that's for certain. Just looking? Alright. Bring it on, you oversized turkey. very low on cash right now, so this little bit extra could be a big deal. Cutting a little close on time here. We'll make it, though. We'll make it.
All right, not a bad recovery for money. Less than I would like, but enough. Oh, dead or restless. Get a free cape here, probably. Listen here, dude. That was pretty rude. Oh, dude, I don't want to go down here. That was spoopy, man. Listen here, bud. Nobody liked that. Well, I'm sure some viewer thought that was hilarious. That's fair. Oh, hell no, dude. You kidding me? Get him out of here. Throwing a boomerang around. Somebody's going to get hurt. Any cool vampires in here? What's up, dude? Free cape. Free being a relative term. I mean, he was already dead, technically. And what is life, if not a series of technicalities? <laughs> ah! All right, that guy was all right. That guy was all right. So the main ways to gain life is by turning the damsel in at the end of the level. You can also uh, roast turkeys or sacrifice on Kali for jelly. But the main health gaining resource in Spelunky 2 is the Kapala, which you get after your second damsel sacrifice on the Kali shrine. Then you can collect blood to gain health. which this run does not currently have yet. Oh, I already have paste. You know what? No regrets. Fighters are scary. Turkey town. Turkey town. I'm going to buy exactly two turkey here. I think the uh, spiders are too big to get eaten by man trap, if I remember correctly. Alright. Okay, 10 grand and the sis right there. Wow, that was a really uh, difficult set of jump there. Yes, but can you watch my main size turkeys for me while I do the challenge? You can? Awesome. Appreciate that. Okay, I think I'm actually going to use a rope to go back up and then bomb down into the sister and the statue. Seems appropriate. down here. Wow. How can I be mad when I'm so impressed right now? Mm 
That was uh, lucrative. All right, one turkey goes down. And I go up. It's going to bomb on the edge here. Oh no. Two ropes then? Yeah, if you don't do the challenge, you don't get to Cosmic Ocean. Is the gist of it. You can get crushed in that challenge, though. For certain. Okay, well. Unless there's, like, a cool Kali Shrine down here. It doesn't look like there is. I'm gonna be roasting these burbs. Let's, let's take a double look for the cool shrine down here. Alright, so I can roast the birds and get... I can roast the birds and get the ghost urn, so I'm going to do that. It's a good, good combo. Ow. Cool, man. I'm uh, out of here. Hey there, Nestopia. Bonk. Yeah, it's a little tough. Let's look here real quick. So this is the black market level. We see the two arrows, and if we go to the back layer, we're going to hear the change music as well. Okay, I hear it. What? I don't disagree, but dang. Where is this? Right here? What a peculiar spot for that. Okay, we have not found the sister yet, but I'm going to go ahead and go into the black market now. We'll come back for the sister after we have the clover and hopefully a bunch more goods. We got a really nice financial recovery here for going into the jungle with only 20k. Gonna leave my bow on the first layer of the black market. We're looking around. So far, not great. Okay, let's buy pitcher's mitt. Let's buy a shoe. All right, given that this run started with paste, I would definitely recommend going Volcana on this run. No glove again. Second daily in a row. Okay. And good news, though, we have plenty of money to buy the Hajit. And this little Hammy Mans. Go drop Hammy Mans off at the exit.
one difficult reality of this run so far is there's been no... No Kapala yet. Okay, so sisters right here, indeed. Just check up here real quick. Ooh, is there a shop down here? I don't think Ton Shop can happen on the black market level. Hey, Pink Fang, enjoy the Spelunky run. Glad to have you. Yeah, now that I think about it, I've never seen a ton shop on a black market level, and that makes sense. Hmm, looks like somebody's using a bomb. That somebody's going to be me. It's a matter of where I use the bomb. Right there will do. We got all three sisters. Beautiful. My man, how much does turkey dinner in here? 800 bucks, $16. A man's life is worth $16. And this turkey is worth 800 Your priorities are all wrong, sir. All messed up, this guy. There you go, bud. Ooga oo to you too, my friend. Really? Okay, I'll take these. No, no shrine, only the one shrine in Dwelling, and there is no chance to be getting Kapala on that one. Um, okay. Here we go. Indeed, Twinge. Ooga oo oo to everybody here today. Yo, Nuke Wave, thanks for 88 months. Appreciate that continuation. Thank you. All right, this is a bit of a brutal situation um, because I don't have spring shoes. I don't have gloves. Um, so I can either use a bunch of my ropes, which are a pretty precious resource at the moment, to uh, Olmec in the hole, or I can do a more complicated technique for phase two. I think I'm going to opt for spinning the ropes here because I can. And clearly, somewhere in the crust, there's going to be just uh, a nice green glove waiting for us. Kind of brutal. It's 
It's not gonna be close enough, is it? Oh man, that's tough. Wasted rope city, population me. Tell me that's gonna work. It did. Oh, why, why, Jay? Another rope, then? You betcha. All right, so I did that to myself. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, snap. Okay, let's gotta push this over. Alright, six ropes. That's a bit painful, but, you know, it's the reality of the situation. Onward, faithful steed. Squish. Madam Tusk is totally going to hook us up with spring shoes and a jetpack here. I can feel it. Yo, walking wall. Thank you so much for five months in Nuke Wave. If I did miss you earlier, thanks so much for 88. One more year for that 100 club. Cheers. All right, all right, all right. Listen here, floppy fish. You've been 86 for weeks. Get out of here. No shrine over here. Oh my god, these floppy fish are out of control. Alright, Freezy Ray, right on. Now we're getting the two sixes. Snake Eyes. Nine? Okay, I'll take it. Oh boy, it's going to be one of these sessions, huh? Oh boy. Can I get past item number one, please? Thank you. All right, power pack is uh, not what I'm going to use here, but cool item, man. Hover pack, on the other hand, would allow us to do the onk skip, so I think that's a good thing. I'm in. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, web gun, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three. Oh, we got the natural seven. Jay, my dude.
Alrighty. I think at this rate I am willing to uh, clone the humphead present. Missing more than a couple key equipments here. Spring shoes, gloves, and jetpack would all be nice finds. All right, blessed turkey, are you going to lead us to a shrine here? There could be a shrine back there. It's possible. Anywho. <laughs> Is there a rope here? Oh, man. Don't you dare poison my turkey. Don't you do it. I talking to you. How dare ye? Um, so in the very remote possibility here that there's a shrine in the top corner, I'm going to check this out. Though that's a strong doubt, and yeah, there's no shrine back here. Alright, next let's create the clone zone. That is the zone where cloning begins and ends. It's going to be right over here. Alright, the zone for clones has been designated. Okay, I'll be taking this. You know what? You just have a nice time with that, sir. Go play with some fishes, would you? Go play with some fishes. All right, listen here, bud. Here's the thing. Didn't ask for any help. Don't want any. Bazinga. All right, we got ropes and a teleporter. That was not the one. Fair enough. Get me out of here. Okay, is there a shrine on this level? The lack of Kali shrines on this seed had been uh, pretty, pretty wild. This looked like it was going to be a shrine, but it's not. Is this the Onkskip area down here? Sure is. All right. Got to use a bomb to get into it either way. So here we go. Um, I would like to see below this as well. I'm going to go ahead and use a bomb here because if I don't clear the bottom area leading up, then <laughs> a multitude of bad things could happen here. All right, that'll just have to do. Let's drop down like this, huh? There we go. That's more like it. Turn around, I dare ya. Okay, bombs right on. It's a pretty brutal sea to Splunky, dude. Pretty 
Frickin' poison crab on the drop-down? Jeez, game. Calm down, alright? Just a little feller over here. Just a little kid named Jay trying to get by. That's all. Alright, door is directly next to the cheesy sauce. That's fine. No Kapala at this point is... Oh, it's abnormal, is what it is. No Kapala at this point means that just making it to Cosmic Ocean means you're going to place pretty well on the Daily Seed, more than likely. Parachute, that's the one we wanted. That's the one. <laughs> if they can use a rope right here, this game right now. Appreciate you. Yeah, that does happen, Zealousy. That does happen. 1 4 is a common place for me to die as well. It's a tough level. All right, if you're doing the daily today, simple gold vortex, simple gold vortex is the urn for today's daily. That's a gold urn with a simple face and a swirl on it. Yo, the errant, thank you so much for making it official with Prime. Glad you're enjoying the content enough to even consider that, dude. Thank you. Means a lot. It's a huge and sincere thank you to everybody who does subscribe and resubscribe with Prime. It's a big part of why we're full-time in our 11th year here, here on Twitch. Well, this is some shenanigans. Uh, why do I- why am I going in here with no juice cup? Uh, because I need ropes real bad, that's why. Monk, monk. Chop him up. Oh no. This is fine. Get out of here, not even dead guy. It's going great till I met you. Yo, Valhalla82, thanks for 35 months. Thanks so much. I'm taking this, uh, this pack off. Hover pack's a good way to get splodied. While well, the extra movement would be nice, it's not a necessity. Okay, I can't see where that spark orb is going, so I gotta use a rope here. I'm not gonna gamble on a drop down for no reason. How about, instead of whatever the hell's going on over here, we do this. I'm dead. Okay. Scary times. Let's try that again? Uh-oh. The downers are salivating. Don't worry, I'll pull it back. Or not. 
<laughs> that was a really brutal situation. No, no cosmic ocean for us today. I'll bet we still place pretty well on that seed. Well, congratulations, Dadders. Enjoy those sweet odds as well. Mmm, pretty good. Pretty good. Three to one. There you have it. Out of the 388 players to go so far, 34 for 6-1. Very tough seed. Uh, tall or simple gold vortex is the urn, and there's also a 12 bomb bag on the third portion of the gambling station. Uh, the black market was also pants, so I'd recommend going uh, Volcana for sure. Good luck, everybody that does attempt the day's day. Hope you all have a beautiful and successful run, even more successful than mine. Well, all right, everybody. Thanks so much for the uh, great time, wonderful company, and awesome conversation for today's stream. Had a fun time with Nova Drift and Spelunky, too. We'll be back and at it again soon for some more fun. Until then, keep it dapper and be good to each other. As a reminder, we're going to run three minutes worth of ads here on our way out. The only ads I play for my entire broadcast. If you let those play, thanks so much. If not, thank you again for the time you chose to spend here. We'll do it again soon. Until then. Have a great one, Dukowski, Dracarnius, Casually, Pinkfang, Nomesta. Congrats on those points, dude. Octopi, Andre, Mad Process, Zealousy, Code Xander, and all the rest. Appreciate you all.